I chose The Glass Castle, a memoir of and about Jeanette Walls, because it opens up a world of poverty, abuse, alcoholism, and a load of other problems of which I am otherwise unexposed to. I wanted to have a better understanding of the world outside of the Beechwood bubble. I find it intriguing that even having grown up in worlds so different, there are still commonalities between us. The Glass Castle is the story of Jeanette Walls' journey and struggle for survival throughout her childhood adolescence, and into adulthood from the age of three. She grew up in a multitude of places, always on an adventure or doing the skedaddle, as her parents put it. In more latent terms, she lived a somewhat vagrant lifestyle. She was born in Tucson, Arizona, lived in Las Vegas, Nevada, San Francisco, California, Booth, California, Battle Mountain, Nevada, Phoenix, Arizona, Welch, West Virginia, and New York, New York. She tells her story of surviving poverty, alcoholic parents, hunger, rape, the abuse of kids at school, college, a divorce, as well as some other mishaps, obstacles, and setbacks she encounters along the way. In the end, Jeanette Walls, through her experiences, sends the message that after everything is done and over with, things work out. You just have to push through and keep trying. And if they haven't worked out yet, it isn't the end. She also comes to realize that everybody has a different way of life. Some may not be able to help their situation, some may, but more importantly, most make their lives what they want it to be. In relation to sociology, the book touches upon pretty much every major concept in one way or another. Through struggles, roles, experiences, and more, for example, there is a great deal of social deviance through her father being an alcoholic and taking her to bars at a young age. She recounts a story in which her father had taken her into a bar and allowed her to be taken away and almost raped by an older man simply because he assumed she would be able to fend for herself. Deviance also plays a major role when she and her siblings were at a public library with their mother on a very hot day. Due to a lack of indoor plumbing and the heat, they were all filthy, grimy, and exhausted. Her mom instructed them all to play in the fountain outside the library to clean and cool off. When bystanders began to intervene, their mom simply ignored the bystanders and got in with the kids. Poverty plays a huge role in Walls' story because she spent her entire childhood suffering, rummaging for food, picking up extra jobs to help put food on the table, sleeping in cardboard boxes, being told a star is her Christmas present, and even attempting to help her mother keep a budget. In addition, they were almost always living in less than adequate conditions, with no central heating or air conditioning, no indoor plumbing, and holes in the roofs and floors. A third major sociological idea seen in her life is the idea of adolescence. Jeanette Walls is the epitome of an adolescent. She obviously went through puberty. The expectations of her were very vague, seeing as her mom wouldn't really work and her dad was an alcoholic. And because of this, she began to have to make many more difficult decisions, like telling her mom she needed to divorce her dad, asking her dad to stop drinking as her birthday present, and saving money to move to New York before finishing high school. She has more pressure because she had to take care of pretty much her whole family as a young girl. And in the midst of all this, she still had to find who she was and find her voice, leading her to realize she wanted to be a writer and a journalist in New York City. The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls should be classified through symbolic interactions. As Rex and Rose, Jeanette's parents, saw it, things were the way you wanted them to be. Everything had meaning, purpose, and reason. They use symbols such as adventure throughout their lives to allow their struggle to seem less. A good example of symbolic interaction is through Irving Goffman's definition of dramaturgy. Jeanette, along with her siblings, was forced to play many roles. She specifically was a daughter, daddy's little girl, a student, a worker, a sister, a parent, a journalist, and more. Although there are pros and cons to everything, this book, as a memoir, is mostly pros, but as a life story, mostly cons. It is amazing that Walls is able to tell her story in such a comedic, entertaining way. Her stories are truly humbling, and they make you seriously reconsider your words, actions, and complaints. In addition, it is written so well that it no longer seems like a boring nonfiction biography, but almost a fictional story, and it becomes a much easier, smoother read. However, her story is both triumphant and tragic. Unfortunately, in my opinion, the tragic triumphs over the triumph. By that, I mean that although her eventual success is inspirational and teaches us a few lessons, it is her unbelievable struggles and tragic life that take the front seat. The con is that as a reader, you are sitting there in disbelief at the horrors she went through as a young girl, while you yourself are sitting on your bed, a mattress at that, 
with a working bathroom next to you, food downstairs, and parents who are able to support and take care of you. And your stomach begins to churn as you realize the juxtapositions between your lives. I would recommend this book in an instant to almost anybody as they lo- as long as they have a mental and emotional maturity that can handle it. I am so eager to do so for the same reasons I mentioned earlier. Through Jeanette Walls' life, you learn both about yourself and the world around you, allowing you to have a better understanding of the ways things work and are in the real world. If you are interested in learning the tragic and inspirational story of a young girl told in an entertaining and at times comedic manner, so much so that it is almost fiction-like, you should definitely read The Glass Castle. This book would definitely be worthwhile for students in a sociology class to read, even if just excerpts, and once again, precisely for the aforementioned reasons. It allows a view into the challenging life so many are faced with. Because the book touches on so many topics, it could really be used at the end of the year as a last unit close-up. However, if I were to choose just one unit for the book to be included in, it would be poverty, because that is the root of almost all of her problems, and pretty much everything in the book can be traced back to having a po- having poverty at the root of it. While reading, many questions or things to ponder came into my head. For example, in life, many say that we need to live life to its fullest and be in the present. But is it really that easy unless you are in such devastating situations and either have a defined end already or have no choice but to change your life and make the best of it? Why is it that even in the hardest of times, Jeanette is still able to make positives and look towards the sun, yet we, whose problems can't even compare, cannot stop complaining? How is it that so many fail to understand that people are the way they are, and if they wanted to change their ways, they would find a way to do so?